In this video, we're going to learn about parallel lines and their equations. So a couple of things um, to make note of before we start talking about parallel lines is when we talk about equations of lines, there's two forms. So for equations of lines, we have two formats, one that you are probably more comfortable with that you've seen a lot, um, which is called slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form. And this is the form y equals mx plus b. And we call it slope-intercept form because you know the slope, which is the m value, and you know the y-intercept, which is the b value. The other form that you might not have seen before is called point-slope form. And this is what we're going to look at more in this video, so point-slope form. And in this um, form, you will have a point and you'll have a slope. So this looks like this, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So for this, the point is going to be the x1 and the y1. So basically, if you want to write an equation that passes through a specific point, um, you'll use this format versus having to find the y-intercept, like in y equals mx plus b. So the slope in both is always going to be the m. Um, and then, so no matter what, you're going to have to always know the slope when writing the equation of a line. It's just going to be a matter of, do you know the intercept, the y-intercept, or do you know a point that it passes through? So now when we talk about parallel lines, think about what that means. So parallel lines are two lines that never cross. So something like this. Think about railroad tracks, lines that never cross. They go on forever. So if two lines never cross, that means that their steepness or their slope has to be the same. So parallel lines have equal slopes or the same slope, however you want to think about it. Um, the slopes have to be the same. So this first example asks us to explain whether or not the lines are parallel. This symbol, I'm going to write it off to the side here, means parallel. So the parallel, so let me just write parallel symbol. It kind of looks like the double L's in parallel or like a slanted 11. That's the symbol for parallel. So that you're going to see quite a bit. Um, so this is asking us to explain whether or not lines A, B, and C, D are parallel. So if we want to know if they are parallel, we have to know if they have the same slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slope formula. So slope formula is change in y's over change in x's. So I'm going to use the slope formula and find the slope of lines AB and then line CD. So if I want to find the slope of AB, notice I'm going to put AB as a subscript here so that I know that I'm using those coordinates. So I'm going to subtract my y's, so 9 minus 5, and then subtract the x's, so 3 minus 1. So that's going to give me 4 over 2, which gives me positive 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but for CD, line CD. So I'm putting a little subscript here to represent that this is the slope of CD. So I'm going to subtract the Y values. So 6 minus 2, subtract the X values, 4 minus 2. So I end up with 4 over 2, which equals 2. So therefore, since my slopes are the same, the two lines have to be parallel. If the slopes were different, then I would just answer and say the lines are not parallel. So I do need to write a sentence. So I'm going to say um, AB is parallel to CD because um, the slopes of the lines are equal. And it doesn't have to be word for word that sentence, but it has to be something along the lines of, well, because the slopes are the same, the lines are parallel. And by using this symbol, I'm saying, well, the lines are parallel because the slopes of the lines are equal. So let's try some other examples. So if I look at this next problem, this is a very common geometry question. It wants us to write the equation of a line. And it's that passes through this point. So it's giving us the point. So that indicates let's use that point slope formula. Um, and it has to be parallel to this equation here. So if it has to be parallel, that tells me about the slope of this line. It has to have the same slope. 
If you think about those equations from up top, in order to write the equation of a line, you always have to know two things. You have to know the slope and the y-intercept, or I have to know a point and the slope. So for number two, I know the point that it passes through. And if it's parallel to this equation, well, that means it has to have the same slope. So that's how I'm going to get the slope. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find the slope um, of the line. So I'm going to look at the original. So the original line they give me is negative 2x minus 5. So if I look at the slope of that, this one's already solved for y, so I'm in good shape. So if I look at the slope of this, it's negative 2. That means, so the slope of this line is negative 2, which means the slope of the parallel, notice I put the little parallel symbol in the subscript, also is going to be negative 2. And now if I know the point, I know the x1, y1, I can go right to my second step, which is going to be to write the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the point, and we're going to use the parallel slope, and we're going to write our equation. We're going to use that point-slope form. And if you notice, there's a graph off to the right here. I'm going to show you what this looks like graphically in a minute. So right now I'm doing the algebraic approach, which tends to be a little bit quicker, I think, in this situation, but graphically also works. So I want to show you that. So y minus y1, so y minus 3, equals the slope of negative 2 times x minus x1. So this right here is an answer. This answer is in point-slope form. If I say to write your answer in slope-intercept form, that means you'd have to go further with this. So you would take and you would distribute the negative 2, so negative 2x, and then I would do negative 2 times negative 2, so plus 4. And then I would bring this 3 over, so add 3 to both sides, it ends up being negative 2x plus 7. This is also an answer. This is in slope-intercept form. So you have to answer the question based on what's asked. So if it says point-slope form, leave it like that. That's easier. If it says slope-intercept form, then go further and get it into y equals mx plus b form. If it doesn't specify, if I were you, I would just leave it in point-slope form. It's a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. So this particular question doesn't tell us, so I'm just doing both forms just because it's our notes, but um, I would have just left it in point-slope form if this was a question that I had to answer. Less room for calculation error. Um, so let's look at this graphically just so you can get a visual. And like any other geometry problem, unless it specifies how you have to solve it, you really have options. Um, so this was the algebraic approach. Graphically, let's go ahead and plot this original line. So the original line, y equals um, negative 2x minus 5. Our slope is negative 2. And then the y-intercept is negative 5. So just a little refresher here on graphing lines, y-intercept of negative 5 means go down to negative 5 on the y-axis. So I have the x and y-axis here. So I'm going to go down to negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the slope of negative 2 is negative 2 over 1. So the negative is going to tell me to go down towards the negative numbers, and then the 1 is going to tell me to go right towards the positive numbers. You always are going to go rise over run, so up or down, and then left or right when you're graphing lines. So positive tells you to go towards positive numbers, negative tells you to go towards negative numbers. So I'm going to go down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, and so on. Continue that process. So I'm going backwards now. You always want to graph so that you fill out your entire graph paper. And then I'm going to attempt to use this line tool. Use your calculator or straight edge here to connect this line. I'm going to have to fix this because that is way off. Um, so let me try to adjust this here. There we go. And I'm going to label that as y equals negative 2x minus 5. And now this is just the original equation. So now my goal is to come up with a line that is parallel to this that passes through the point 2 comma 3. So if I go to the point 2 comma 3, which is where I want to start my new equation, if I have to be parallel to this, I'm going to use my same slope. I'm going to use that slope of negative 2 over 1, which means, again, down to right 1. So start at this point. That's your starting location, and go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. You should see that these lines never cross because they're supposed to be parallel. So if they cross, that's an issue. 
And I'm going to backtrack here. And now that I filled out the graph, I'm going to again attempt to connect this. Having a little bit better time this time. And there is my new line. And if I need to write the equation of it, well, I know the slope is negative 2, so it's going to be negative 2x. Find the y-intercept that's up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the y-intercept is positive 7. So I would just use the plus 7 and get this into y equals mx plus b form. I wouldn't, I mean, you could still use your point slope form when you're on a graph, but in this situation, it you would really just be doing it algebraically. Um, so you wouldn't really need your equation. If you're using your equation or you're using your graph, well, then you might as well write it in y equals mx plus b form so you can see the y-intercept, you can see your slope. So you see that the answers match. So again, just a graphical way of doing the same thing. Um, one more example here. So if we look at number three, now we want to write an equation. So again, our goal is to write an equation of a line. It has to pass through this point, and it has to be parallel to this equation here. So we are going to use, again, that point-slope form because we know the point that it has to pass through, and the parallel is going to tell us that we have to have the same slope. So no matter what, you need to know the slope in order to write the equation of a line. So my first step here is going to be to write um, the slope or to figure out the slope. So if I look at my original equation, 3y equals x plus 15, um, I need to divide everything by 3 to get the slope. Whenever you are trying to find the slope, the first thing you need to do is isolate that y. Get y by itself because you want to find what's the number in front of x. What's that m value? So this is really a 1 times x. So it's 1 third x plus 5 when I reduce that. So my slope of this original is going to be one-third. That's the number in front. Don't ever try to figure out slope without getting y by itself. You have to get that m value. So m is one-third. So that means the parallel slope is going to be the same. It's also going to be one-third. So now the second step here, when I go to write my equation, I'm going to use point-slope form because I already know a point and I know the slope. Now you could use um, y equals mx plus b here. Just same thing in the number two. You could have used y equals mx plus b and just plug your point in for x and y and your slope and solve for b. That's another strategy. But this formula is such a useful formula. That's why I recommend using it. Um, so I'm going to do y minus y1, so it's 5, equals my slope, which is 1 third x minus x1. And again, this is an acceptable answer. This is an answer in point slope form. I am very happy with you leaving it in that format unless the direction says slope intercept form. If I want to go further, I would distribute the one third. So one third x minus one third. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in my calculator negative one third. Um, plus 5 because I don't want to have to add those fractions in my head. So I'm getting 1 third x, so negative 1 third plus 5 is giving me positive 14 over 3. So this would be another answer in um, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b form. So right away, I know that this problem isn't going to be a good problem to do graphically because I just did it algebraically. And look at my y-intercept. I'm not going to see that on a graph. So if I were to go and graph it, let's just practice it, just to practice graphing equations. So if I graph this original, y equals 1 third x plus 5, my slope is 1 over 3. So on a graph, so let me just write it up here so that it doesn't get confused with the work for this problem algebraically. The slope is one-third, which means that we're going to go up one because it's rise over run. So positive numbers up and then to the right for three for positive numbers. We're starting here at five. So you remember, you always got to get your equation equals y into y equals mx plus b form before you start graphing. So I'm going to go up to five. One, two, three, four, five on my y-axis. I'm going to label these as well. And then I'm going to go up 1 over 3. 1, 2, 3, 
up one, one, two, three to the right, up one, one, two, three to the right, and backtrack, one, two, three, down one, one, two, three, and so on. One, two, three. Connect with a straight edge. Using the side of your calculator can work for that, a fold or something. And this gives me my equation, one third x plus five. So now if I want to find the equation of a line that passes through the point one comma five and is parallel to this, let's go ahead and try it. So I'm gonna go up are over one and up one, two, three, four, five. So this is going to be almost touching that line. They're very close together here. Um, and if I want to be parallel, well, now I'm going to have to use the same slope. So I'm going to count up one over one, two, three. So these lines are almost touching, but remember, they're not quite touching because they're parallel. One, two, three. And down one over one, two, three. Down one over one, two, three down one over one, two, three, and I'm trying to make it look like they're not touching because they should not be touching, but I know my, um, I'm having a difficult time drawing this line, so this is gonna be tough here. So let's see, I'm trying to get this so that it doesn't actually touch. I'm gonna go with that. I know it's not perfect, but um, I'm having a difficult time actually holding that in place. And now when I go to write my equation, the issue with this is gonna be, I can't really do this on a graph right, because I don't know what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept is some uh, one, two, three, four, four, and some decimal. I know the slope, but I don't know the y-intercept. So I'm not gonna really be able to write the equation of this from the graph. So I'm gonna have to either use the point-slope form or um, use y equals mx plus b, or take point-slope form and reduce it down to y equals mx plus b, or you could plug into y equals mx plus b and solve for the y-intercept that way. Um, but regardless, for this one, you can't really do it graphically. You have to do it algebraically so that you can come up with the equation. So graphically, you can check that. Um, I know my equation is going to be the 1 3rd x plus 14 over 3 because that's what I came up with algebraically, which makes perfect sense for where I have it located on my picture. So you can definitely type these in your calculator, check them, make sure they work. Um, but honestly, you have to know how to do this algebraically because look at this example here where graphically didn't work. So at this point, go ahead and work on your check your understanding problems.